It's been a little while since my last video upload, but I'm back in the shop with a brand new machine that will help me recondition the BMW R60 slash 5 brake drums. This machine is a brake lathe, and if you don't know what that is, let me explain real quick what it is and what it can do. A brake lathe is a rigid machine tool that will allow you to remove material from a rotating workpiece, just like this brake drum that I have already mounted onto the spindle. The spindle of this machine is powered by a half horsepower electric motor, which is housed underneath of the spindle. The power is transferred over one V-belt and you have exactly three speeds on this machine to choose from, slow, medium, or fast. This machine also has another axis which is exactly perpendicular to the spindle. On this axis we will be mounting the cutting tool which will allow us to remove material from the rotating part. Both of these axes have power feeds so as the spindle is turning we can transfer power over to a lead screw which will then move the spindle out. And on the other axis, we can also engage the power feed, which will allow the cutting tool to actually move outwards. I know I didn't go into full detail on this brake lathe because this video is technically not about a brake lathe. It's about machining brake drums on this brake lathe. But I just wanted to give you guys some quick info so you guys understand what this machine can actually do. If you guys have any questions about it, you guys can leave a comment down below. And if you guys have ever worked on something like this, uh, let me know what you guys machined. But right now I'll share with you guys the parts that I have over there on that table and I'll discuss what I'm gonna do theoretically and then we'll move over to the machine and start machining some brake drums. So on this table, the most important part is the brake drum and I'll get to that in just a second. I also have a brake shoe. This is a used brake shoe. Uh, over here I have a measuring kit to check the run out on the brake drum once it's rotating on the brake lathe. And I also have some other miscellaneous tools. Now on this piece of paper, I already drew up the brake drum. So you guys will have a better understanding of what I'm actually doing here on this brake drum. And right now I'm gonna talk about the surface that's existing on the brake drum. Now the surface is first of all worn, it is glazed. It is also a little bit rusty because this bike was sitting for a couple years. So that's obviously not good, especially if you wanna get new brake pads, you wanna address the surface first and then you wanna address the brand new brake pads that you're going to install onto the brake drum surface in order to have proper braking power. Now I'll share the sketch with you guys so you understand what this surface actually looks like and why I'm reconditioning it. On this piece of paper, I made a quick sketch of the brake drum, which is highlighted in red. The yellow highlighted area is the brake shoe, which is obviously above and the shaded area just above the brake drum is the braking material inside of the brake drum. That's most of the time cast iron and that's what I believe it is in this brake drum as well. Now when we look at the top surface, it's not necessarily a surface anymore because it is a very wavy profile. On the very edge, we have a lip and over the whole surface, we have many high spots and we also have many low spots. The low spots are glazed and the high spots are actually digging into the brake liner. If I share with you guys the brake liner, you will notice over the whole length, there are lines, and that is actually from the braking material inside of the drum that's chewing into the liner itself. The only way we can save this surface and recondition it is if we take a cutting tool, like the one I have right here, and we go down into this material and we make it smooth again. What we wanna accomplish is a parallel surface from the braking material to the brake liner. So with all that theory out of the way, I'm gonna go onto the machine now and share with you guys how I set up this brake drum. I'll also share with you guys the run out. So I'm gonna get some precision gauges so we can check the run out on this brake drum. On the front end of the brake drum, it is touching up against the shoulder of the shaft on the brake lathe. Uh, that shoulder is precision ground so is the shaft diameter. Now on this side of the brake drum, I also have this tapered part which will push up in the brake drum and that will center it on the shaft. These two parts are just spacers and this is the nut that tightens everything up against the shoulder on the very front. Now, since this is already centered and the shoulder is touching the brake drum, I can now go ahead and check the run out. To check the run out on anything that is turning, you want to check it on multiple places, especially since we're going to be machining the inside of the brake drum. So that will have to be checked, but I'm also checking the drum itself. So as you can see, I will be checking this red marked area, which is an outside diameter that has been machined. 
and the yellow marked area, which I already have the dial indicator set up. So I'm going to be touching it up on the face and I'm gonna check the run out this way. And I'm also gonna to touch it from above to check the red marked area for the run out. If I think that's good, I'm gonna go ahead and check the area where the brake material is. Sure, that can be worn from over time and especially it could be uneven. But what's really important is that you check your brake drum specifically because this will be centered to the shaft on your brake lathe or any lathe that you use to machine. You guys just saw me touch off on two different surfaces on this brake drum. Everything seems to be just fine. And then the last touch off was on the inside on the brake material itself. And that was running true as well. So now I can go ahead and grab my cutting tool, install it into the tool holder and get ready for my first cut. This is how the finish looks like. As you can see, it's very reflective and I'm really happy with the surface finish. That means the spindle speed is just fine and the feed of the spindle is also really good. But when we have a look up above, there are still some low spots and some imperfections. They are not very deep, but I wanna still get those out of the brake material. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give it one last cut and hopefully those imperfections will be out. I finished up with this brake drum and now we'll remove it from the brake lathe. On this table, I have exactly two brake drums. The left one has not been reconditioned just yet. The right one has been reconditioned and I just removed it from the brake lathe. But this is how the surface looked like originally. It was glazed and worn at the same time. So this will still be put on the brake lathe and I will touch this up off camera. But looking at the one that I just refinished, it looks 10 times better. The surface is uniform. And now I also have a great surface for brand new brake pads. If you wanna come in close, uh, you will notice some little imperfections on the surface, but I did not wanna remove more than two thousandths of an inch because that is already a lot of brake life, especially since this cast iron is one part with the brake drum. So if we come in close, you will notice there are some imperfection and that is actually just tiny, tiny pitting that evolved over the years uh, because this bike was sitting for a couple of years and I believe uh, this was due to moisture. Uh, if you look at it from a different angle, you will notice the surface is very nicely finished. But when you look at it from the front, you will just notice that tiny little pitting right there and right there. But like I said, I don't want to remove more material because once more material is gone, it will never come back onto this brake drum. So that's pretty much it when it comes to machining brake drums on a brake lathe, just like this one right here. If you guys think I did a good job, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. If you guys have any questions or concerns, Feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh yeah, and don't you worry, I will be featuring the rear brake drum once more in an upcoming video. And I will be installing the drive dog, which is driven by the spline of the final drive. So I'll figure out how I'm gonna install that onto this brake drum. And once I have a solution, I'll bring you guys back for an upcoming video. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video. Peace.